The history of the nations indigenous to North America and the burgeoning United States is one that is widely unknown. In order to uncover the entangled roots of the colonial settlers and the first peoples of this land, Children of the Sending Sun convened indigenous knowledge keepers to speak on this shared history. The stories that emerged reveal indigenous values, beliefs, and lifeways as they were pre-contact and as they are today. We begin with Oren Lyons, a faith keeper for the Onondaga Nation of the Haudenosaunee Confederacy located in modern-day upstate New York. Assigned by his elders to go out into the world to fight for the rights of his people, Oren has taken his teachings all the way to the United Nations, where he was pivotal in the creation of the United Nations Declaration of Rights of Indigenous Peoples. In revealing the traditions of his people, Oren emphasizes the need to know the history in order to understand the current terms of a nation-to-nation -nation relationship as described by their treaty with the U.S. government. You have to know the history in order to understand the point. Oren walks us through 400 years of history between the United States and the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, illuminating the tradition of his leadership role in government and how that looks in contemporary society. Dear friends, relatives, elders, and respected women, I don't know the Lummi language, but I'm still learning. On behalf of our family, on behalf of the nation, thanking each and every one of you for being here. And our hands go up to each and every one of you. Mm. We're very happy to see you, our friends and relatives. Mm. Nyawahaskano. I said from our language, thank you for being well. That's our greeting. Scano, same word for peace. Nyawahaskano. And in our language, your answer is kwasha dogus. What you say is true. It's, uh, <clears throat> I was so pleased to come to uh, Lummi country again. And it's been on my mind for a long time. Um, first, I want to introduce myself. My name is Joy Quisson. Tahuni, not Nang, I'm Wolf Clan. And my mother was Wolf, Seneca Nation. My father was an eel on a dog nation. And to clarify the introduction, in the Haudenosaunee, we are matrilineal. We go by the mother's side for our identity. And when my mother came to Onondaga as a young lady, and my father married her and they raised family. Six boys and one girl. Uh, 
I was brought up at Onondaga. That's where I live. But I was Seneca by my mother's side. All our family, six boys and girls, Seneca. And then they asked me to sit on the uh, Onondaga Council and my youngest brother, Kingsley Lyons. And we were quite young at the time. And she said to the clan mother, Rita Peters, she was holding five titles because there were four other clan mothers that were MIA somewhere. So she had these titles. She had to fill them titles. And we have a process within the Haudenosaunee, what people call Six Nation. Uh, French call us Iroquois. English call us Six Nations and our proper name, Haudenosaunee. That's Mohawk, Oneida, Onondaga, Cayuga, Seneca, Tuscarora. That's our confederation, the old. And we have adoption policies in our confederation. And so part of the process of becoming on the chief's council, leader's council, I have to be on a daga. So I I had to consider, as my younger brother, we would have to go and we would have to take our name off the Seneca Nation and be adopted into the Onondaga Nation. It's a long process, and you can't do one without the other, so. I asked my younger brother, and I said, uh, Rita says, you should come along with me. And he was pretty wild, and I was pretty wild myself. I said, he said, well, what do you think? I said, I, I don't know. She's, she wants you to come with me. He said, okay. So we went to the leadership of the Seneca Nation, Cattaraugus, New York. And we told them what our ideas were and our position that we had to remove ourselves now from, from the role of the Seneca people. They were reluctant to let us go, but I said, well, they said, you understand what, uh, what that means? I said, you know, your, your land or you don't have any. Yes, I said, we understand all that. So they said, oh, all right. And so we were taken off the rolls of the Seneca Nation. And then we didn't belong anywhere. And it took almost five years before they adopted us. So we were kind of in no man's land for five years. You know. But then we were adopted. And the clan mother said, you have a choice here. You can be adopted into the clan that I want you to sit for, which was the turtle. I said, do I have an option? She says, yes, you do. She says, if you want to keep your clan, then the position that you sit for in the turtle will be temporary until we find somebody that's from the turtle to take your place. 
She says, but it's, yes, you can maintain your identity as a wolf. And I did. As well as my youngest brother. So we were temporary. That was 55 years ago. Still temporary. <laughs> 55 years ago on that council. Temporary. <laughs> It's hard to find leaders, very, very hard to find leaders that's willing to commit. Now, our system at Anadaga, on the Haudenosaunee, is still the old system. It's still the traditional system that was established probably 1,400, 1,500 years ago. There's no elective system at Onondaga. There's no BIA. There is no government but us because of that, because we keep our way. It's not easy. And so I wanted to clarify the introduction because he introduced me as a Seneca. I'm on a dog, a wolf. We have, um, on one side of our, our, our council at Onondaga, we have the beaver clan, uh, the snipe clan, that little bird and long, snipe clan, turtle clan, a wolf clan that sits on this side of the house. And on the other side of the house, we work across is a deer clan, a bear clan, and the eel clan, and the uh, hawk clan. And in the Seneca Nation, they have the same clans, but they had one more, and they have the uh, heron clan. And the different nations, the Mohawk Nation has three clans, turtle, wolf, bear. And uh, Cayugas have six and so forth. So it's not all the same across, but the, the clans are the same. And then what I found out over period of time was that a wolf is a wolf is a wolf, whether I'm in New York or whether I'm in Arizona, there's a wolf clan, so that's my family. I know you have a wolf clan, my family, we're all one. So it's a broad family the way we do. And what I found out, I learned over a period of time was how our system, the clan system, tied us to the earth. A brilliant, brilliant system. Because we're tied to the earth. A wolf is my brother. I look after him. I worry about him. I think about him. His work. And the same with all. And when I traveled around, I found out that Navajo Nation, my goodness, they had a cloud clan, they had a wind clan, they had <laughs> but all tied to the earth. It's brilliant. So we're relatives out there. Everything you see out there is our relatives. And close, close related. And I listen to the Lakotas in their prayers. At the end, they always say, all my relations. And when they say all my relations, they mean every fish that's swimming, every tree that's growing, every grass. That's our family. 
That's your family. It's our family. But our brother from across the sea, he's lost that relationship. Doesn't understand it, knows it's there, but lost it. And that kind of give him license to take advantage and do things that's to your own relative that you shouldn't do. In the Confederacy so long ago, when they put us all together, the peacemaker, the great peacemaker, gathered us long ago. It's a long story. I won't go into that because it's so long, but established our relationships and the clans. What he said to the leaders at that time, go into the woods and the first thing you see, come back and tell me. I saw a beaver, henceforth, that's your family. I saw a snipe, henceforth, that's your family. So he established that to us. And that's matrilineal, the women our lines run with the women. Whoever the mother is, that's who you are, not the father, the mother. And as you well know, the mothers think different than the men. They're concerned about life, they're concerned about family, they're concerned about things. And the men, they have other ideas sometimes and they have other work as well. So there's always a balance, there's always a balance. But it takes a man and a woman to make a family, children, however, to look after children. And so the work is equal, as you know, but over all the years of my travel and so forth, I see the women work harder than the men. There's no doubt about that. They work harder than the men. And they kind of overlook our, sometimes not growing up fast enough. Mm -hmm. They kind of, you know, they, they have a lot of patience with us, luckily, fortunate for us. And so it's been a, 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 good, a good relationship, a good family. It's a good balance, look after. Responsibility of the earth here, that's our responsibility. And the two common laws that I see in my travels, I see that uh, our people, and I say our people, I'm talking about native people, in these lands here, they have two common law, two rules. And the first law, the first rule is respect. Respect for yourself, respect for the nation, respect for life, respect for everything. That's a law, that's a rule. The second one is to share. Share what you have. Everything. If there's. That's a big law. That's a big rule to share. In the old days, a hunter would go out in the woods and he would find his mark and leave meat hanging in a tree for the next person that comes through. He's sharing. And the youngest hunter, the first time, the first kill, he takes that meat and he goes to all the elders and he gives it to them. That's his first rule, the first law, to share. And that's what our brother from across the water doesn't like. He's the opposite way. 
mine, he says, me. It's hard for us to fight that, but we've managed to, to do that. Just uh, two days ago, I was down to uh, Yelm, where we had a traditional circle of Indian elders and youth meeting. It's our annual meeting, and we bring in the traditional leaders from all over the country. And we're hosted by a nation. This was Nisqualis was hosting us. And the McLeod family. And we'll, next year we're going to be hosted by the uh, Northern Cheyenne Lame Deer. They have taken the staff, so that's where we'll be meeting next year. And to re-energize the nation and the people back to their traditions. I was very pleased to see the dancers and the songs here. It really raised my spirits to see that little, little boy. Boy, he was dancing. That's the future. Now, sometime, not too long, he's going to be this big. He's going to take care of them. But he's got a good start. And that's to your credit that you keep those songs and you keep those dances. That's the foundation of us. That's our foundation. This is a ceremony. That's who we are. To give thanks. So the two rules, to be thankful, to share, make sure, and respect. Respect for life, respect for everything, and above all, respect for yourself.